Today's episode is brought to you by Path 11 TV, inspiring entertainment for the spiritually curious. With a Path 11 TV membership, you get instant access to over 100 hours of exclusive video content that explores consciousness, healing, and life after death. Also with the Path 11 TV membership, you can attend our monthly events and live streams free. In the past few months, we've already had medium readings with Drew Callie and Suzanne Northrup, along with a numerology session with Nicene Siegel, and Chinese face readings with Marla Goldberg. Join us for our next event, July 21st, for another gallery reading, this time with medium Mark Schmidt. You can start your Path 11 TV membership for just $9.99 a month, or get two months free by getting an annual membership. Podcast listeners can save even more by using coupon code PODCAST30. This will take 30% off, making your first year only $70. That's only 20 cents a day. Don't hesitate, because this offer is only good for a limited time. All membership plans have a seven-day free trial. So start streaming with your membership to Path 11 TV today by visiting path11tv.com and start satisfying your spiritual curiosity with our exclusive library of inspiring entertainment. Now let's get to today's show. Hi, and thanks for tuning in to the Path 11 podcast. I am your host, April Hanna. At the Path 11 Podcast, we are here trying to deliver leading-edge research on consciousness, healing, and metaphysics. And just like you, we are trying to answer the big questions about life. Who are we? Why are we here? And what is our purpose? We hope by listening to our podcast, it will make each day you live on Earth a little easier to understand. And now for today's podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast today. I am very excited to introduce you to my guest. It happened, I think, on a whim of synchronicity. And when you begin to hear the story, you'll probably understand how I found her, how I got to her. And uh, I'm really excited to ask her a bunch of questions about her recent book called Erin's Energy. My guest today is Camille Dan, and she's the mother of Erin and his two brothers and one sister. Aaron had passed away in September 22nd of 2019, really close to about one month before my mom passed away. So Camille and I were really dealing with um, the death of our loved ones in 2019. I related so much to so many things in the book uh, with the timeline that she had kept that I forgot in my own grief what was going on, what the weather was like, and things that were happening. So she is writing about the communication with her son and the communication that she had with her son after he transitioned from physical form. She has prior professional experience as a critical care registered nurse and a medical technical consultant for feature films and television. She is currently president and founder of a private investment management firm. She's a philanthropist and hospital board director of Sinai Health System Foundation and a member of various charity groups. Her book, Erin's Energy, is actually a book where all the proceeds are going to charity, and we'll talk more about that as well. But Camille, welcome to the Path 11 podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Yeah, same with you. And I found you. I don't even remember how I found you. I knew it was through Instagram. I can't even recall what I saw what post, if it was connected to somebody else. But every now and then I'll sit on our Instagram page and I'm always looking for stories. But I really feel like Aaron connected us, your son connected us, because I have amnesia in a sense of how the heck I found you. (laughs) I can't figure it out. I just remember sending you like a private message. There was something of a post that I saw that really hit my heart. And I was like, I need to speak to this woman and I want to help her get the word out about her book. So that's how I found you in this this synchronistic world that we live in. So I have a feeling after reading your book that Aaron really made the connection for us. I obviously really believe he did too, especially since everything that's happened since I lost him. And I, I believe all the connections we make are made this way through spirit now. I think, I think you're right. I think there was something you saw that you felt, that you felt in your heart Absolutely. that, that I posted about spirits and spirit connection. I believe that's true too. 
Yeah. It's, and as I, got, you know, began reading more of the story and learning about Aaron and all the information that he had given you, I was just blown away by a couple of different synchronicities. And I have to give you so much credit for, and your friend that told you, just journal and start writing down. Because my mom had passed away October 19th of 2019. And I knew, given the platform that I had, that I probably needed to document some stuff and write about it because I probably would eventually be talking about my grief journey, maybe writing a book myself. And I was so numb and I just didn't have the energy to do it. And like a year and a half later, as I'm coming out of the fog a little bit, I'm like, darn it, why didn't I do that? Like I have some recollection, but, and this is fairly raw still. And the fact that you were able to get this book out in such a short period of time, I really commend you. And I'm so glad your friend had said, just journal and write stuff down. So you were able to put all of these thoughts down in, in the book that you created. Yeah, it was, thank you. And it, it I still um, can't believe it too, that I started so early in, in my journey after loss. You mentioned having amnesia. That's very common in grief, grief fog and grief brain, they call it. And I knew I would have a lot of amnesia, the amount of shock that I was in. And, and that in combination with the startling uh, message from my friend. I was a former skeptic, but that message contained information even she wouldn't have known. And then the next day, when I met with the police, one of the detectives said something word for word from the message that my friend had given me. And I, I was just astounded by it. And I thought, okay, I better write this down. And in my grief state, I knew I would forget, you know, things. And I just had a feeling there was more coming. Hmm. I don't know what was telling me that, but I really just start to not forget, just like you're saying. And it just um, grew from that point. Then I started to realize, oh, every time I write, I feel a little better. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep doing. Yeah. Perfect. Let's rewind a little bit and let's talk a little bit about Aaron and when you were pregnant with him, because you had an out-of-body experience. I don't, the way that you wrote it, I was like, is it an out-of-body experience or a near-death experience? I wasn't sure because you were like, I got to get back in my body. There's a baby in there. So <laughs> why don't we talk a little bit about Aaron and when you were pregnant with him and, you know, what his life was like up until September 2019? Yeah, my Aaron's dad and I, we decided to take a trip when I was five months pregnant with Aaron. And I felt a little nervous about taking a trip during a pregnancy, a trip like that. And sure enough, I got really sick and I had a high fever. So I'm not even positive if it was an out of body or near death, to be honest with you. It felt like I was out of my body for an indefinite amount of time, but apparently it was, wasn't more than a few seconds that I wasn't responsive. But, but when I woke up, I remembered the whole thing, but I also knew that I, there was so much knowledge that I had out there that I couldn't have in my body while I'm in my body. And then I recovered <laughs> and had Aaron and she was a remarkable child. I, he was always ahead of what I would expect for a child his age. And he had this level of wisdom. I don't know where it came from <laughs> because it wasn't something I had taught him. He would come out with incredible stuff at two and three years old and just unusual for that age. And he grew up that way. He just always had this wisdom about him. And always said the right thing. And in a way that he would see things from a different um, perspective than most people would. And so as hard as it is to talk about him in the past now, I, my gut feeling is that was coming from heaven or from the spirit world. He, he was very connected with, I believe. He was a very sensitive person. He was had so much empathy for others. And he was a very generous and helpful person as a young adult. I do believe that some of the struggles he had were 
based on having so much empathy and caring and generosity for others. Yeah. And I know that when you and your husband had split Aaron's uh, father, when he was in the teenage years, he struggled a little bit with addiction and just struggled with his emotions and sounded like he ended up getting back on track. He did. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember you writing in the book that like three days prior to him passing, like you guys were out at lunch. He was, you guys were talking about real estate. He was looking to purchase something. And then in three days later, he's gone after this tragic accident. Yeah. Yeah. And the circumstances surrounding his death are somewhat suspicious and still under investigation. So I still don't have all the answers on how this happened. It's, I think about whether or not I really need those answers anymore. Will it really, what will it really do now for me to know specifically what caused his passing? And it's it's more about that it happened to me than how it happened at this point. But I, I believe the answers will eventually come and it'll be hard to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And I can really relate to that because there were also some really strange and weird things at my the night of my mom's death and different witnesses. And I got all the police reports. I got her autopsy, just everything that was written. And I was I'm in the same position as you are. It's okay. There are just some things here that make absolute no sense. Will I ever really know? And if I do find out, Does that really change anything? Does it bring, does it it really bring you peace or not? Because I think eventually, speaking from my perspective, is that I had to continue to heal the grief that was going on. And sometimes getting stuck in those details just keep us in that loop of the day of their death. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I find that myself doing that sometimes when I do have any discussions about it with police or anything, it just takes me right back to day one. And you feel, oh, how much have I moved forward now if I can be taken right back? So I I do agree with you. I, I, I feel very similarly to the way you do. Yeah. Yeah, I can really empathize with you when I read that. And when you also wrote, will this be helpful for me? I was like, I know, sister, I'm there with you. So why don't we, after Aaron's passing, clearly you were shocked, you were numb, you were going through the grief. Why don't you begin to tell us how his communication with you began to start? Yeah, so that was that was another shock (laughs) and surprise, very unexpected. And it's in the title, my unexpected journey. I was after the funeral and and all of the visitors have waned and you're there by yourself having to deal with this amount of loss. And I thought maybe getting out of the city, I live in a big city, I thought maybe getting out of the city somewhere peaceful might do me some good. So I, and I had read about it. I've read, I started reading books and I found them very helpful at the early stages of grief. I, I found them like friends and companions who understood what I was going through. And in one of the books I read, it talked quite a bit about getting out into nature. I thought, okay, I'll go to the cottage and that should make me feel a little better. He passed in late September and it was early October then and we were driving up. And as you leave the city, it gets quieter and more peaceful. And in October, the drive is gorgeous with all the colored leaves, the reds and the yellows and beautiful forests. And I'm watching this out the window. I'm the passenger, not the driver. (laughs) And I'm watching this out the window and all of a sudden it just washes over me like a tidal wave. Aaron's never going to see this beautiful sight again. And I start crying. And right away, I hear his voice as if he's in the car, in the back seat of the car, driving up there with us. That's how obvious this was his voice. He said, I see the colors, mom, I do see them. And, and I, look, I was startled by it. And I looked at my boyfriend who's driving and I, I, 
he didn't seem to have heard it. He just was driving like normal. And I, then I'm thinking, did I just hear that in my head? Was that, what was that? And then Aaron said again in his voice, I see the colors, mom, but not like you do. He said, I, I can't explain that how beautiful and vibrant they are. He said, it's, I see the energy that the leaves are emitting. And I was just shocked. I was just stunned. So then when we got to the cottage and it was much more peaceful and more quiet, his voice was coming through pretty regularly talking to me. And of course, I held on to skepticism for a long time until it got to be just evident, not just hearing his voice, but in combination with signs that I was seeing while I was up there too. And, and that's continued. It still goes on. The more that happens, the more I consider that evidence and convincing. Yeah, I would agree. And in your book, too, you also have really great pictures to go along with the signs of the stories, which is just a nice visual for the reader. It's one thing to read it, but then you actually took some pictures of stuff, which was, you know, really great. And so as the communication began, you began asking him kind of questions about how does this work? How, yeah. how does the universe work? And there's two two main points and two take homes that I really got from the book. But before I get to the flow of energy and energy circulating within us, we're going to come back to those two points. I also want to talk about how he was able to communicate with you when you were open and your energies were in balance yeah. and then how he had to communicate through others when you weren't as open or maybe you were in a state of blame or guilt or really deep throes of grief. Because I feel that I'm sure we have a lot of listeners and people who are watching this on Path 11 TV that they're listening to this show specifically because they either lost a child or they lost someone and they're looking for the stories of hope. Is there life after death? And sometimes even some of my clients will be like, I haven't had a visit from my son or why why won't I dream of the person? Like people get visits in dreams. Why don't I get visits in dreams? And I thought Aaron's explanation about how he's able to connect with you and come to you and talk to you and give you these signs is really when you're more open and in a state of flow with, with the energy of the universe. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. And I want to thank you for asking about that because that's, that is the big takeaway from the book. And the message that Aaron wants me to spread is that we can connect more readily with our loved ones who have crossed over, dependent upon our state, our internal state, and our, and our environmental, the environment we're in as well. Internally, we can reduce our own anxiety. There's means to, to improve our connectivity with them. I am not an expert. I'm, I'm just going to say I'm learning as I go. I came from a place of skepticism, uh, a medically based background. So my, my belief system prior to all of this was, this is all explainable, measurable phenomenon. But what Aaron has explained to me is that we don't, we lack the capacity in our physical existence to measure everything around us. But we do have some control over how we can connect with what we can't see, the, the energy around us and within us. And we're composed of energy. We're, the universe is entirely comprised of energy. So in order to connect, with it and to be able to be in touch with signs and messages around us that we we can't sense with our five senses we can't measure with devices we have to create an energy atmosphere that's compatible and inviting whenever i wasn't in that state of compatibility which which is more internal peace and calmness and tranquility and love. Self-love is part of that. We have to love, feel self-love 
to be able to reach that state of inner peace and tranquility. When you've just lost someone and you're in that grief, those states of grief where you're not feeling self-love and inner peace and tranquility, which is normal. And Aaron says to me, it's normal, mom, don't worry about it. You're human and those are human emotions. And many of our human emotions and traits are tied to our physical survival. So we, we have them, we can't dismiss them. But we can control some of it to, to some degree and not all the time. So we do need to move through grief. We need to acknowledge that we will feel grief. Yeah. And that also helps us to find that place of self-love and inner peace and tranquility to allow ourselves to experience the feelings we have that are normally associated with loss. I do mention in the book that there are, are many ways to achieve that. I don't go into great detail about them. I t do talk about how I do it and what works for me, which is deep breathing, deep regulated breathing, and some visualization. I, I attempt to visualize in my mind what I think the energy around me looks like little particles or points of light flowing around me and through me. And I'm able to regulate my breathing and find a, a state of inner calm. And I'm very, I re readily connect with Aaron when I'm in that state. There are times when I connect with him when I'm not, and it's just as often. But I think in the beginning when I started that way to, because I wasn't feeling that I, that it was ready for me. But the more I did the practice, the better I got at it. And I started to notice more. I started to hear him more. And then I'd start walking around my house talking to him in a conversation. <laughs> We just wanted to take a quick break to talk about our sponsor for today's episode, Path 11 TV. Not a fan of watching videos on your computer or laptop? Neither are we. That's why we recently launched the Path 11 TV app for your smartphone and TV. Now you can watch on your iPhone, iPad, and Android devices, or if you prefer to wind down in your living room, you can now watch on your Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire devices. For listeners of the podcast, the easiest way to get started is by pointing your web browser to path11tv.com and starting a seven-day free trial. But be sure to use coupon code PODCAST30, again, that's PODCAST30, to take 30% off of an annual membership for maximum savings. Once your membership is started, visit your smartphone or TV's app store and download the Path 11 TV app. Once downloaded, you can then link to your newly created account and start streaming on the go or relaxing in your living room. Visit path11tv.com for all the details. I found his words so comforting when he said to you, like, Mom, it's okay. It's okay if you're having a bad day. And that's normal. Like you said, that's the human experience because it gives us, like, permission. It's like when you make that contact and you have that connection, you just want to keep it going when you have like your off days or you're feeling really sad or you just get so busy with life. It's, yeah, we are here for the human experience and that's okay. But one of the things that Aaron talks about and that I've read in many books of parents who have lost children and they come back and they're writing books with their children is that the children are saying, like, I am here everywhere at all times. I am always around. This energy is always here. It's here and everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. So I, f I found that just to be very comforting. And I really, what I thought was very unique with Aaron is how he talked about the flow of energy. And I was freaked out a little bit because two days ago, uh, Mike and I, we were on location filming a person who had a near-death experience and had some artistic ability before it, but then ended up having a traumatic brain injury, couldn't continue with his old life, and then became a full-blown artist. And while I was there, he kept using the word flow. 
No, I and I always read people's books like a day and a half or so before. So it's really fresh in my mind. So I hadn't read the book yet. And he's, oh, yeah, look at the flow. I'm really trying to get this flow of energy in my art. And then like, here's two days later, I'm reading your book. And that's all that Aaron's like talking about is getting into this flow state and this flow of energy. And here I was just talking to this man two days ago that I believe had an experience and a connection with spirit in the other world when he was in an induced coma. And this is his language. It's the same language that I'm reading that's coming out of Aaron and coming through you. So that was really interesting, the way that he talks about the flow state and how energy likes to flow. But the other fascinating thing that I really enjoyed reading was when he talks about how the energy begins to circulate within us and really focusing on when we get into these flow states internally with anxiety and depression and grief. And not that that is negative energy or bad energy, it's just a different flow state of energy. So I was wondering if you'd like to talk a little bit about the flow state and what exactly he means or how you understand it with the energy circulating within us. Yeah, that's a big question. And again, I, it's, I'm new to this and I learned from him. Sometimes what happens is he'll tell me something and I'll go look in a physics textbook. <laughs> and there it is about about energy and how it works and how it flows. And yeah, so he 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 started by telling me energy, the universe is entirely made of energy and that the energy of source is love. And that the purpose of the flow of energy is for creation and that love is the source of all creation including us, including creating us. And then a little further down the chain, we have the ability to create. So we possess the, the love energy of creation as well. We have tools, hands and eyes and abilities, varying abilities to create from the source of love as well. And he told me that energy flows through everything at varying rates. So one time he said, look at that rock, mom. If that rock could see, it might not even be able to see you going past it. You're going so fast. Your energy is going so fast compared to the energy that's flowing and contained within that rock right now, cycling within it. He also said, we can be like the rock. We can slow our energy and keep cycling our energy within ourselves instead of beyond ourselves when we're in a state that's not creative and not loving with ourselves. But he said, ultimately, that isn't sustainable. That's not a sustainable state. And the energy will dissipate back out into the universe for better use. So he's saying we're all part of the same source of energy and we're all a product of it and we when we're no longer when our physical bodies are no longer able to continue our energy that's operating our bodies and running our bodies and the and our connection to the main source flows back to it yeah, that's in a nutshell, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, it's deep, it's intense. And he was also, when you were asking him questions, talking about how like the collective, these are his words per se, but how I understood it was like the collective consciousness, like when we're all doing for good, that really has the big ripple effect. And when people are in maybe that energy circulating state of hate or anger in the masses, that too can create a ripple effect. But he also said that the universe always comes back into balance. Yes. Everything comes back into balance. And I also wrote a, a note when you were asking him, why is there a pandemic now? And he said, there's no such thing as why there only is. It is. And that was also in the section where Eventually, the universe is always in balance and knows how to return back to balance. So my takeaway from that was the pandemic is here because it's creating 
that balance. There's a balance that's coming back into some sort of state with this occurring and happening. Yeah, and she has indicated to me not to try to understand the vastness of the universe and what is on the other side of, we think of balance as almost like a seesaw and it is up the other. He said, you'll never figure that out, mom. So don't even try. (laughs) Yeah, I thought it was interesting too when you were like, is there such thing as reincarnation? Like in the very beginning of the book and he was like, this is a way basically that humans can wrap their mind around this whole concept of energy in the universe and life and death. But it's, I forget what he said. It's something like humans like to put value to things. We're always trying to label and figure it out and intellectualize it. And you guys can't even comprehend, (laughs) but you'll use these terms to try to help you to understand it. Yeah. So I thought those were all like just really interesting parts. And again, I, with both of us experiencing a very deep grief experience around the same time in 2019. I wanted to ask you too, like when the pandemic hit, for me, I almost felt like my grieving process was put on hold because I had friends and family and people who were supporting me in my grief. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hits and now everyone's grieving. It's, I I felt like I, I never felt so alone in my grief until the pandemic hit. And then I had a pause button because I also had to do mental health therapy and I had a ton of clients in crisis. So I felt like I put my my grief on hold in order to help others and be of service in the role that I am. But at the same time, everyone that was stable for me and had like I would say they're stuffed together in a sense. They weren't grieving or going through anything pretty traumatic. Then all of a sudden, everyone in my life, my whole support system, everyone, we're just all freaking out because there's this virus and our lives are changing. And then everyone's grieving their life of what's happening. And I really just started to start grieving again, how that things are coming back to normal. So I don't know what your grief experience was like, just in, we were, we're in the same timing of this of moving through very early stages of grief. And then all of a sudden we're thrown into a global pandemic. So I'm just curious to know what your grief experience was like when COVID hit and as you were grieving for Aaron. Yeah, I hear a lot in what you're saying about yours that I can definitely relate to, especially when you say having to be supportive of others while you're grieving so deeply. It's That's a really tough place to have to be. And that is what happened to many people just prior, if their loss was just prior to the pandemic or during the pandemic, grieving so much. And it, and the evidence of it on the news, the depth of grief, the, the ripple effect of it throughout the world. The one thing for me that was different for a lot of people was Aaron had given me this message just prior to this. I was in in North America, we really hadn't anticipated a pandemic at that stage yet. And it dawned on me when it began and when I could see the fallout from the COVID pandemic and the concurrent mental health pandemic a crisis that we were entering it 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 added some purpose to what i was doing and that was really when i decided to publish the book i wasn't even thinking of it honestly i'm i've never written a book before and i never thought about writing a book and didn't consider myself an author but i saw aaron's message coming together with this pandemic and i thought here's what he wants me to do. He wants me to have a way to help others. And so I decided to publish the book and to donate the proceeds to what I see as the, as a concurrent pandemic and a longer lasting pandemic than COVID-19 will be, or the COVID pandemic that'll eventually resolve and one day be forgotten. But the mental health and addiction issues will continue and they will be ongoing and the bereavement and the grieving that will continue on. And that's where people will need, there, there will be a lot of need, ongoing need there. And that was what 
prompted me to, to publish the book yeah. and to get Aaron's message out at that. The timing just seemed, again, synchronicity. We talk about synchronicity and there it was in my face. Absolutely. I'm so glad you wrote the book. I'm so glad that Aaron just has been this chosen soul and spirit to be a messenger in in his form. I don't even know if I like to use the word afterlife anymore because I feel like life continues, consciousness continues. But let's talk a little bit more about how people can find the book. And can you explain a little bit more about the proceeds of this book and the charities that it's going to, because you were also offering a free gift to our listeners. We're putting it in the show notes that you will provide them a signed copy if they would like one. So how are the proceeds working with the different charities of the sales of this book? So the book is available on Amazon worldwide. You just have to enter your country. It's called Aaron's Energy, An Unexpected Journey Through Grief and the Afterlife with My Brilliant Son. And Aaron, I chose the word brilliant because I, I see him as a star in the, in the sky, which is brilliant. And he was brilliant in life. And the timing of his message is brilliant. It's also, you can also purchase it through my website, www.aaronsenergy.com. Also, I have a, an Instagram account, Aaron's underscore energy underscore book. And a uh, Facebook group page called Aaron's Energy. Those are the ways you can find the book and find me. And the proceeds of the sales are going to mental health research and addiction and mental health care and addiction care centers internationally. I'm giving to a few different organizations on both of the bereaved bereavement as well, bereavement support services. There's an international center in Toronto for mental health and addiction care, where the proceeds have gone. There are bereavement organizations. There's Good Grief Healing. And there's also an organization that's international called Helping Parents Heal. Mm -hmm. And I did publish a second edition that acknowledges Helping Parents Heal and has an expanded recommended reading list and also an additional journal entry. It's the same title, the second edition, and it's available on Amazon Smile. And, uh, and I've gotten so many letters and messages of gratitude of how much the proceeds have already been helping people to access their healthcare workers and their mental health workers. So it's been very rewarding. And I'm very grateful to everyone who has bought the book and contributed in this way. Yeah, I'm so glad we get to be a part of that and to spread Aaron's message and your story out there in the world. And I uh, love that the proceeds are going to charity. I really highly recommend that everyone purchase this book. Go to the website. We'll have it in the show notes. And Camille, thank you so much for being a guest on the Path 11 podcast. And Aaron, I thank you very much for being here with your mom and uh, touching my life as well. So I wish you a lot of luck with the book and getting the word out. And I just want to thank you again so much for the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. And thank you for the work you're doing. I, I love your podcast and I'm definitely a fan. And I've subscribed to it and I'll listen to them ongoing. So thank you. Yes. Yes, you're welcome. And if you have any new stuff coming out, you let us know and we'll have you back on. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, everyone. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this podcast as much as I enjoyed um, sitting with Camille. And please check out the website, purchase the book, find her on Instagram. It's where I found her. And I will talk to you all next time. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. If you haven't already, please subscribe and rate and review the Path 11 podcast in Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, this podcast is made possible by our sponsor, Path 11 TV. Visit path11tv.com to start a seven-day free trial and start streaming over 100 hours of exclusive video content on consciousness, healing, and life after death. That's path11tv.com and be sure to use coupon code podcast30 to take 30% off your annual membership. 
Start satisfying your spiritual curiosity with a membership to Path 11 TV today. Bye for now.